ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at none other than the super controversial release of Ant-Man based off his appearance in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now technically you could of course use this figure in your endgame display as well which is what I intend to do so I'll be throwing in a few endgame comparisons as well. Now for those of you wanting to pick up your very own Ant-Man he is in stock right now and ready to ship with DHL from ToysWantland.com. This guy actually got here in record time just like the Hawkeye. Hawkeye was sent late Friday night and arrived early Sunday morning. That is absolutely insane in terms of shipping speed. But either way, link for that is in the description below. And while you're down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new hot toys, sideshow, or indeed third-party content goes live on the channel. Either way, what we're going to do now is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here we have the box art for Ant-Man himself. Now as you can see right up front and center we do have an image of Scott Lang as Ant-Man either shrinking or growing depending on how you want to look at it and a huge Ant-Man text right up the front there. The cool thing is though it's holographic and to sort of illustrate a bit better what I'm talking about you can see the sort of rainbow effect of the holographic text that's all over the entire box. All of the sort of logos that would otherwise be white including the Hot Toys one on the front there they're all holographic and it looks really really cool. Now I do I do like the red effect on the front there. I wouldn't be surprised if when we get the Wasp, her box is going to be gold. I can't wait to see that figure. Fingers crossed they nail the head sculpt on that one. Now let's get this one out here because speaking of head sculpts, I know this one has a lot of controversy around it and people were actually saying before I even released this video that I was going to like it. Well, let's find out throughout the course of this video. Don't forget, I will be giving you my personal opinion of the head sculpt and the entire figure. That doesn't mean that you have to agree with me by any means. If you don't agree, that's totally fine. But don't forget, I'm giving you my personal opinion. Now let's get it out here. Enough about that. We're here to see the figure himself. I've seen a couple of pictures, of course, of the sculpt and of the suit itself. And my first impressions, if you haven't already, go ahead and check out the Six Scale Network podcast. But here is the sculpt. And I have to say, first impressions, not that strong. But I'll be going into much more detail comparing it with the Civil War one. And of course, the first release, the Grail Ant-Man, people are calling it now, in just a second. But either way, let's get the figure himself out here. Because this suit, based off the pictures that Ryan Kirkwood took, looks absolutely beautiful. I've seen this in person before, and in hand now, it looks stunning. That red metallic is absolutely gorgeous, and I cannot wait to compare this to the Civil War version, which was one of my favorite designs for Ant-Man, taking into account all of the different looks he's had over the years. But this one, I think, might potentially take take the cake. Now of course he comes with a bunch of other little bits and pieces and what we're gonna do now is get all of this stuff laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with Ant-Man. Now don't worry we will be spending an extended amount of time talking about that head sculpt but let's take a look at the display base first. Here you can see it, a picture of Ant-Man sort of growing or again shrinking on the front there, Ant-Man and the Wasp and Scott Lang. I do wish, and I know it's never going to happen, but I wish they'd included an Avengers Endgame plate that you could have put over the top so this figure could have been used for both. Don't get me wrong, the shape is at least right, so I still will be using this in my Endgame display, but it would have been nice to show that Hot Toys was thinking of that for this figure. But either way, they didn't do that. Now let's take a look at the building itself. This piece is actually surprisingly really, really good. I wasn't expecting to like this as simple as it is, as much as I do, but you can see the detail on there. It's nicely weathered, it's nicely dirtied, and all of these little pieces are soft rubber, so that makes sure that you won't break them. Now initially, I thought this was going to be a telescope piece that you could pull all the way out. It unfortunately isn't. I now realize that it might have been a little bit fragile to do that, but either way, you pull this one out, which is in there quite firmly. You pull out the smaller one, then you can take the extended one, install the little posts in the top there, then you have the extended version. These wheels do roll, so you could technically have someone rolling the building around, which is a nice touch. I love this little accessory. Technically, it of course wasn't seen in Endgame, but still, I'm going to have this displayed on the display base next to Ant-Man himself. Now, this 
wouldn't be an Ant-Man release without a tiny little shrunk down version of the character. Here you can see his new suit. I do have the Civil War version as I go dropping it because it is really tiny. You can see that the new one is actually even smaller than the Civil War version, but I think the paintwork is actually even better on the new one. It is super tiny, mind you, but they definitely have done a nice job. You can see who it's supposed to be. And of course, the nice metallic red is, of course, very nicely represented, even on something so incredibly small. Now, this piece right here is actually a collar piece attachment for the figure itself. So it's kind of his helmet folded back. You can see all the folds of the helmet tucked away. This will, of course, just slot onto the back of the figure when you use the unmasked sculpt. And here it is. I know, the smile is creepy. There's no two ways about it. It definitely looks creepy. I've done my best to sort of accentuate the shadows with lighting so you can see that the teeth do sit a little bit further back than you might expect. But when you look at it from below, there's no two ways about it. It really isn't the best Paul Rudd head sculpt. Is the smile horrid? Yeah, it kind of is. What they should have done is they should have molded the teeth separately. My wife, Ms. Collection, Stephanie, actually did do a Photoshop where she put the shadowing back into the teeth and it looked a hell of a lot better. But then again, if you look on the inside there, it is just a solid sculpt. So those teeth are all right up in the front there. That's why they look so close towards the front of the mouth. There should be a gap there. Those should have been a separate piece. I think that would have alleviated some of the issues because from the mouth, or I should say the nose up, that is Paul Rudd. And it does look really good. But the mouth itself really does ruin the entire thing. Will I be using this sculpt? Absolutely not. This is not one that I'll be using, but I'm sure a lot of people will be able to make use of it maybe from the side right there. That looks like Paul Rudd as well. But then again, I don't think you should in the same vein be cancelling your Ant-Man order just because this head sculpt isn't great. There will, I'm sure, be third-party Paul Rudd head sculpts out there that you'll be able to pick up to replace this one, but most of the time in Avengers Endgame, I'm sure you're going to be using the helmet itself, and here it is. Don't worry, we'll compare that to the Civil War in just a second, but I wanted to show you the helmet. It looks really good. The top of it is magnetic, so you can install the batteries, and the cool thing about this one is, and I'm not sure if you can quite make it out, but his eyes are behind that faceplate, which is a really nice touch. You can't open it up and reveal the face itself, which is rather unfortunate, but it is definitely in there. Now let's quickly compare this helmet to the Civil War one. It's surprisingly a little bit smaller. The paintwork is also a little bit darker. It does have the red stripes on the front, just like the original Ant-Man helmet, but it borrows some of the design aesthetics with the longer and more sort of circular snoot towards the front, just like we saw on the Civil War version. But again, it's much darker in color. Now let's compare this guy right here to what people were affectionately calling the Ben Affleck head sculpt. The skin tone is a lot darker and the five o'clock shadow is definitely a lot darker as well, but I personally personally see more of Paul Rudd in this one right here compared to this one because of that expression. He's more serious and yes you can I do believe use this one on the new figure so we'll see that a little bit later in the video. I think it will work a lot better for Endgame rather than this one right here. This one does work for maybe a first Ant-Man figure where he's doing his little dance you saw in that gif I'm sure. You can pop this on the first Ant-Man and maybe make that work but for me personally this one is the best Paul Rudd likeness in an entire head sculpt, but this is not the only one that we do have. We do have this one right here, which technically isn't a head sculpt, it's a helmeted sculpt with just a face plate. That one is by far the best, so let's compare it to the new one again. Oh, just looking at that smile, it's really, really creepy, but either way, this one does have a very, very subtle smirk about it. It's by far the best Paul Rudd likeness, but it's not a head sculpt, it's just a face plate, if you will, so... Then again, just comparing these two for the final time, I think this one is the best, in my personal opinion, standalone Ant-Man head sculpt. If you're comparing this one, this one blows them all out of the water. So hopefully that settles the head sculpt debate. Don't forget, that's just my opinion, your opinion may vary. Now he does come with these two little discs, one red one for growing objects and one blue one for shrinking them, and of course he does come with a bunch of hands, these two being my favourite, this one to obviously look like he's about to push the button, and this one to hold his little discs. The cool thing is, they've actually made the button a little bit more detailed than what we saw previously, and again, a nice armour plate on the back there. Either way, that's pretty much it for the accessories. What we're going to do now is get the figure himself out here and take 
a closer look. Now I know I said we were looking at the figure next, but I quickly wanted to show you the backdrop that comes with the release. I was rummaging through the box as I was about to put the figure on display, the review was exporting, but nevertheless I found this and I knew I had to add it into the review. He comes with a backdrop piece, it's again that cardboard style backdrop. They are a little bit flimsy and they tend to bend, but I like the artwork, it kind of appears like Ant-Man is shrinking down. I don't like the fact that there's a huge Ant-Man and the Wasp logo at the top there, I kind of wish it was just this graphic so you can kind of have it shrinking down and then have Ant-Man himself standing in front of it, that would have been awesome, but nevertheless it still looks really good. And here we have the new Ant-Man himself standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, and I have to say, just standing here without that head sculpt on there, and you know what I think about it by now, I think this looks really really good. As I said, don't go out and cancel your orders just because of that head sculpt, there will be third party ones, I'm sure of it. This suit just standing there? looks fantastic. The metallic red just pops. The metal pieces that are supposed to look like metal on the suit, they really do look metallic. It's painted nicely, everything is sculpted nicely, the outfit has some really nice engineering choices that you'll find out about a little bit later in the video, but as I said, just standing there, it looks amazing. And don't worry, when we punch in, you'll see the light-up effect, which is actually surprisingly awesome. I wasn't expecting it to be as cool as it is. Either way, what we're going to do now is punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have Ant-Man himself up close and personal. Now we're going to take a look at the actual helmet first. As you can see, or I'm not sure if you can, I have the lights on currently. They do illuminate the face in there very, very nicely. I do have a bit of an issue with it and you can't really tell, but there's some dust on the inside of the lenses. I don't know how they got in there, it's probably because of the factory, maybe it was a little bit dusty and the dust was in there. Usually that sort of stuff doesn't happen, I'm not sure why it's happened on mine. Fingers crossed that doesn't happen on yours, but either way, the rest of the outfit looks absolutely sublime. You can see that little backpack on the back there, nicely painted, it looks like metal, it looks fantastic, and so too does the entire suit. This red pops, you can see it sort of shimmering and reflecting, it looks really, really good. The entire suit is covered in that and I love it. Now they've done a bit of a nice piece of engineering here on the shoulder pads. I do believe they are on Velcro, you can sort of hear them moving under there, and yes, I can confirm without fully removing it, they are actually on Velcro, so fingers crossed if they do pop off, they can easily be put back on. That is definitely a nice touch. Now I would be worried about these elbow pads. They do look like they could come off, especially if you bend them excessively. That's a little bit scary actually, I might undo that. So do be careful with these pieces right here. You can see they look a little bit stressed because of the shape of the elbow there, sort of pushing it outwards. Don't know why they didn't flatten that a little bit more, but still, as long as you don't go too crazy with the posing, I'm sure you're going to be perfectly fine. Now these gauntlet pieces, they don't actually move unfortunately, I would have liked to have been able to push them down a little bit to cover that joint, but at the very least, the suit comes down over the wrist peg, that rubbery style suit, and covers up the joint quite nicely. Luckily as well, the hand pegs are made out of a darker material, so it does match quite nicely, it does look fairly seamless, but at a distance you can still see there is a disconnect between this part of the gauntlet and the hand itself. I would have liked a little bit more of a seamless look. Now the belt also looks fantastic. There's no sort of action gimmick features. It does look like it could light up. Maybe someone wants to install some lights in there if they really wanted to. It's translucent plastic so you very well could. But as it stands it doesn't light up. It still looks very good though. Panning the camera down to give you a closer look at the rest of the outfit on Ant-Man. Now as you can see it obviously continues on throughout. But before we start talking about the material and bits and pieces, I quickly want to note this little crease that's up the top there. I did a bit of a pose session earlier just to get a bit of a feel of how this figure can move and that crease has still been there. It sort of tucked itself into the joint and then it's been sort of pinched ever since. Hopefully that goes away. It's a little bit unsightly because it's on a very flat black section, but as it stands now, that crease is definitely there. Now this material I think could have been made out of like a spandex style material, but instead they went with rubber. They always go with rubber, I don't know why, I said this on Rocket Raccoon, that could have been made out of the same material as the previous one, this one could have been spandex here and it would have worked perfectly fine. This is a high stress area, hot toys make this out of a material that can bend 
and not crease. That is absolutely annoying, and I don't know why they've done it. But either way, enough about that. It looks good at least. All of the detail is there. The red looks really nice and metallic. It just pops. It's shimmery, and it looks fantastic, just like it does on the upper torso. Now, panning down a little bit further to the knee pads, these are a little bit worrisome. As you can see, when you bend the knee, they kind of lift up, and you can really get your finger in there. I don't know why these aren't made of sort of a Velcro attachment scenario like we saw on the upper shoulders there because I feel like these if you keep bending the knees will pop off and if you want to have him in sort of a running pose like you see at the conventions they have this figure in a running pose these most definitely I think over time will come loose you can see they're already a little bit wobbly and just like some of the other figures that have had that issue that will happen now as you can see the red metallic is on there as well on the back and they look absolutely awesome these as well i assume would wrinkle so do be careful now the feet themselves are done in a bit of a weird way they're detailed and sculpted really nicely but you'll see how this affects articulation later in the video this top piece isn't attached to the suit and then the foot is separate it seems to be attached to the foot i've tried to separate it but it seems to be one continuous sculpt so when you move the foot yes they are in line but that means you're barely getting any pivot why, Hot Toys, did you not make this foot separate to this piece? Have it floating so you can move it around freely instead of being a piece that's attached to the foot. That's a really weird decision, and I'm not exactly sure why they decided to do it. And now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison. Here we have the brand new Ant-Man on the left compared to the OG, the original Ant-Man on the right. Don't get me wrong, I still absolutely love the new one, but I have to say, standing side by side, the original just looks so darn good. I love how weird it is, how it has that retro tech sort of aesthetic about it, and I love that. It's still my personal favorite, but either way, we're not here to talk about the original, we're here to talk about the new one. As you can see, it's slightly taller than the original figure. I don't know if that's by design, maybe the new suit has a bit more padding in the shoe area? I don't know, honestly, but either way, they still look really, really good standing side by side. And you can see that evolution of how the suit has changed over time. Still has a couple of those design aesthetics, that little piece in the center of the chest there. The belt looks very similar. And of course, the helmet snoot is still ever present. The cables, though, thank goodness, are gone. Either way, what we're going to do now is get the Civil War suit out here and continue the comparisons. Wow, I did not realize how big this Civil War Ant-Man is. You can almost say he can stand in as a quasi-giant man. Look how much taller he is than the new figure. So that means compared to the original, he's quite a bit taller. I don't know why they've sort of messed around with the body proportions on these. I would have thought that they just used pretty much the straight up same body for all three, but it looks like they absolutely haven't done that. It looks different yet again. A lot of people didn't like the Civil War suit, and I don't really know why. They said that the helmet looked a little bit pig-like, it's got a long snoot, and it's very slender in the face, and I can see that, but it also looks kind of funky in a really modern, techy sort of way, and I like the way that it looks. The suit itself is a lot darker, it doesn't have that metallic red, which absolutely pops on the new Ant-Man on the left there, but it again has those design aesthetics that kind of carry over throughout. You can see that it does have that sort of clicky button on the hand, which is a staple now for Ant-Man, and of course the helmet design looks more along the lines of what we're seeing with this new one, but then again, the new one takes what was good about the Civil War suit and then blends it together with the original to create, in my opinion, a lot of people's favourite all-time look for Ant-Man. Me, personally, though, I still think that original one is my absolute favourite. And now for one last comparison, here we have the Avengers Endgame Ronin slash Hawkeye. Bit of a sneak preview at what's coming up next on the channel. I know I should have used the Hawkeye version of this figure, but I couldn't help myself. He looks so darn good as Ronan. But either way, I didn't realize Paul Rudd was that darn tall. Let me know down in the comments below if this is accurate. I know Jeremy Renner wasn't the tallest guy in the world, but I did think he was taller than Paul Rudd. But either way, you can see they kind of stand around the same height, but if you remove the hood, on Ronan, then Ant-Man is slightly taller. But either way, technically these two were from the same movie if you count this Ant-Man suit as an endgame design. And I really like how this line is coming together. They're so visually different from one another. You've got the really dark black and the gold and then the super vibrant red, that metallic look. They look so different, but they also complement each other very nicely. I can't wait to show you what the new collection displays looking like in the upcoming collection tour. Now, just going over articulation on 
Ant-Man himself. Now bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure. I have purchased it with my own money. So that means I'm going to be a little bit more careful. When you get your Ant-Man in hand, I'm sure you can push the joints a little bit further than I'm willing to go. But either way, starting off with the head sculpt itself, it is on a double ball joint, so you do get a bunch of motion out of it. Quite surprising, actually, that it can look that far up. Very, very impressive. You can, of course, get some pivot. That's mostly happening from the lower joint in the neck there, but it definitely does the job. And, of course, you do get it going forward as well. So very impressed with how much you can move that helmeted head. Now, the arms themselves are done on a bit of an interesting style joint. These pieces are Velcroed on there, so they can sort of move out of the way, but they nicely sit over the top when you move the arm up. That, again, is very impressive engineering. Going forward, it's a little bit hard to move because of the nature of the suit itself. I kind of wish they'd just made this arm in this material and then plugged it into the body with like a cap sort of piece there so that this could have moved independently of the body itself. They didn't do that and you can still get enough range of motion but it would have been a nice touch at least for them to consider doing something like that. Now the arms themselves, a nice double bend at the elbow. You do have a swivel at the bicep and you do of course have that butterfly joint that's also moving as well. So a bunch of range of motion out of the arms. Of course, traditional 1-6 scale joint at the wrist itself. Now the torso. It is going to be a little bit more restricted due to the nature of the suit, but you can get a little bit of crunch. And when I say a little bit, I mean a tiny bit. You could, of course, push it a little bit further, but you can already see it sort of protruding there around the back. So just be careful and exercise a little bit of caution when you're moving that. You'd also have a little bit of pivot and swivel at the waist. Now, the legs themselves, because of the nature of this rubbery style material, will be, again, a little bit hindered, but you get forward to about there. You can go a little bit higher, but again, just be careful going outwards out to about there. You do, of course, have a swivel at the upper thigh, a really nice double bend at the knee itself. Be careful of that knee pad, mind you. And you do, of course, at the foot, have that traditional 1-6 scale joint. It's weird, though, how they've done it. This piece, I think, should have been attached to the boot itself. As far as I can tell, it's connected to the foot rather than the leg. So that means you're not getting as much pivot as I would like. Just trying to move it now, and yes, it does appear to be fixed. So that means, again, the pivot is slightly restricted, but you can definitely get enough forward and back to make a few of those sort of in the quantum realm poses work quite nicely. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things about this new Ant-Man figure. Now this has to be the first and biggest and most egregious annoying thing, con if you will, about this figure. The mouth, the teeth, I don't know why they're anywhere near as close to that upper lip as they are. You can see they actually protrude further than the lip itself. That's weird. I don't know why Hot Toys did that. They know that teeth have to be separate from the mouth itself. They've done it often. I don't know why they didn't do it here. If they had fixed that and made the teeth separate, I think the sculpt would have been absolutely fantastic. But in this instance, no. They didn't nail it. This is definitely a miss. The second annoying thing, no, it isn't this plate itself, but it's the fact that when you install it on the body, as you can see, the paint tends to chip away because the cavity that you install it into is very, very slim. So do be careful that you don't scratch off the paint on the front. If it's on the back like mine, then yeah, you can get away with it. But still, it's a little bit frustrating that after one installation, that's happened to me. And the third annoying thing isn't this suitcase. This suitcase is actually fantastic. It's the fact that you don't have any hands that you can actually use to hold the little pulley lever here and actually it's really tiny as well so technically you could kind of shove it in that gap there but again, that's weird. I don't know why we didn't get a hand that's designed for holding this piece right here. The first cool thing has to be this little building. I know I was kind of just griping about it, but either way, it looks good. I love how sort of the windows have this subtle glint about it. They look like glass windows. That's fantastic. So too is the detail on the top. I love the wash. It looks dirty. It looks aged. It's fantastic. So too are these little pieces right here. I love the fact they're rubber. That means they're not going to break off if you accidentally bump it or Ant-Man happens to fall over, potentially. That's not going to happen because these are rubber. So you're definitely protected in terms of those breaking. Now for the second cool thing, and you're probably thinking to yourself, Justin, why on earth is there a pot of Vegemite in this review? Well, technically, this big Ant-Man could be a one-to-one -one scale Ant-Man that sort of shrunk down halfway. Then you have the pot of Vegemite 
right, so he's sort of miniaturized. Or again, you have this super tiny little version that comes with this figure. So as you can see, he's tiny enough to sit next to your Vegemite pot and be a fully shrunken down version of Ant-Man. This is really good for any sort of photography based on your figures. The third cool thing has to be the fact that you can install this Civil War head sculpt on this body. And I think it works perfectly. It's a really good expression for an Avengers Endgame version of Ant-Man. He's more serious. Obviously, it's the end of the world as we know it. Therefore, he would have a more serious expression. And this looks absolutely awesome. I promised David Tan that I'd do this in the review and here it is. And thankfully, it looks really, really good. Just wrapping up on Ant-Man based off his appearance in Ant-Man and the Wasp and of course, Avengers Endgame. Game. Now this figure right back when I saw it first announced, I knew I had to have it. I loved this look for the suit based off Ant-Man and the Wasp and the outfit does translate very very nicely to figure format as well. I love the metallic red, it just pops. As soon as you hit it with even a tiny bit of light, it just comes to life. It looks absolutely fantastic. So too do all the silver bits on the suit. Now, there is one big bugbear that I know a lot of people have with this figure release, and I kind of do as well, and it's that Paul Rudd head sculpt. Let's be honest, it's not great. They should have sculpted the teeth separately. They're far too frontwards in terms of where they're placed on the sculpt. They're right pressed up against the mouth. There's no gap at all. It literally looks like his teeth and his lips are combined. I don't know why they didn't do that. Have one more pass in the R&D department just to get it absolutely spot on. Because trust me, they know how much people have been asking for a more expressive Ant-Man head sculpt all the way back since when we got the Civil War version. I still do like that Civil War head sculpt. In fact, I think it's the best standalone head sculpt out of the two. Bearing all that in mind though, the original Ant-Man still is my personal all-time favorite. This one comes up second and then now the Civil War suit comes up third. They are all still really, really good releases, but do not pass on this figure right here just because of that head sculpt. Pick it up Keep the head sculpt in the box, sell it off, do whatever you want with it. I do think that a third party company will come out eventually and give us a really good likeness if that's what you'd like to do. But for now, just have a really awesome Ant-Man with his helmet on. There's no real problem about that. Most of the time when he's doing battle or shrinking down, he's wearing the helmet anyway. In fact, he has to, to use any of his powers. Keep the helmet on, and then eventually, if a third-party company comes around and does a head sculpt, just use that. But for me personally, I think this look, having the helmet displayed on the figure, is perfectly serviceable, at least for me. You, however, will have to make up your own mind and form your own opinion on that. Just a quick side note on how I do my reviews. I give you my personal honest opinion. Just because you don't agree with me doesn't mean you're right or wrong or I'm right or wrong. It's a personal decision. Like any form of art, a figure is a piece of artwork. It was created by a company and an artist. You'll have your opinion and so too will I have mine. Just because it might be more positive than yours or I can make excuses like still pick up the figure, keep the head sculpt in the box, doesn't mean that I'm making excuses for the figure as a whole or for the company. That's just how I see it. You don't have to agree with me whatsoever. So just getting that out there. Also, yes, I am partnered with Toys Wonderland. That means I pick up all of my figures from them and I'll let you know at the start and the end of the video. That doesn't mean that I have to say positive things about the figure at all. I can give you my full on honest opinion because I've purchased this with my own money. That's exactly how it works. Again, just because my opinion might be different to yours doesn't mean I'm right or wrong or you're right or wrong. You'll have to make up your own opinion just like I've done with my Mine. That being said, of all of that, I'm about to plug Toys Wonderland, so if you don't want to hear it, close the video now. You can pick this guy up right now. He's in stock, ready to go with toyswonderland.com. You guessed it. Link is down in the description below. Also, while you're down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.